darlings, welcome to the first episode of Dining Through the Decades. My name is Sage Lillyman and today we're going to be making three different canapes from the 1950s. I'll be sure to leave all the recipes in the description box below so you can make them at home. Whether you want to have a little dinner party or even just eat them as a snack because they're so delicious. Let's get started. Today we're going to be making salmon mousse canapes, cucumber canapes and deviled eggs. I'm just going to put on the eggs to boil while I prepare my other ingredients for the cucumber canapes. So to hard boil these eggs, I'm going to keep them in for about 8 minutes. And turning the stove on. Okay. Now, for these cucumber canapes, we're going to be blitzing everything up, so I don't actually need to finely mix any of these ingredients. So we can just roughly chop these. So garlic, red onion, chives, Worcestershire sauce, apple cider vinegar, spices and cream cheese and mayonnaise is, is going in here. Just bear with me. <laughs> Stupid garlic. Now we're only going to be putting a small amount of red onion in, about this much. And this is going to give the dressing a really, really nice colour. And half a clove of garlic. We're also going to be putting in some chives too, just roughly chopped. Because the blender is going to do all of the work. And you can use a little neutral bullet like this or a food processor. And it's not authentically 50s, but modern appliances for easy, for easy cooking. Okay, and now we're going to be adding some cream cheese. And if you do have allergies, don't worry. You can use a dairy-free cream cheese or something like that to replace the dairy cream cheese. I also have some dried spices in here. I have some curry powder, paprika, dried basil, oregano, and thyme. So that's just going straight in here. And adding in that dairy-free cream cheese that I mentioned earlier. And we're also going to put a small amount of apple cider vinegar in. About half a teaspoon. And some Worcestershire sauce. And the same amount, half a teaspoon. And I'll have all of the, that was more like a whole teaspoon. <laughs> Be generous. Um, yeah, I'll have all of the exact measurements down in the description box below. And last but not least, we can't forget the mayonnaise. Now, if you recognize this recipe, it's because I actually made it in my 50s housewife week. It was so delicious, so I thought I would share this with you all so you can make this at home. All right, now that we've got all of the ingredients in the blender, we're just going to blend this up until smooth. Okay, because we don't have a lot of ingredients in here, I'm going to need to give it a little bit of help and mix it up. If you have a larger amount, you shouldn't have this problem, um, but yes, you kind of need to do have a fair bit. I'm only making half the amount because I'm making this for James and I. So if you were to make this for a dinner party, you would make a whole lot more. Alright. Let's try this again. Alright, let's see how this is. Ooh, it looks a lot more blended. The last time I made this, I didn't put chives in, so it was very purple from the onion. But this time, it's a lot more green. Okay, that's lovely and blended, and I can put this aside and start preparing the bread and the cucumbers for the canapes. 
We're going to be cutting out little circles in the bread and that's going to be the base of our canapes. Now you can use a glass and just tip that upside down and create the little circle with that or you can use a cookie cutter if you have one too. Okay. So because the bread is not a huge size, you can only get two circles from it. So don't waste the leftover bread. You can definitely use this for breadcrumbs. You can just blitz that up and store those breadcrumbs. And if you get a little bit of crust in there, that's okay. Extra nutrition, right? More Kelly hair. <laughs> Okay, so now with the cucumber, we're going to make thin slices with the peeler, little strips down the cucumber. And this is going to add a lovely decorative touch once we cut these up. And you can also score these as well, but I'm just going to keep it simple and just peel. Let's get one more in. about half an inch slices of the cucumber and this is going to go on top of the dressing on top of the bread. We're also going to be using these cucumber slices for the salmon mousse as well and the salmon mousse slices are going to be a little bit thicker because they're the base so they need to be a little bit more sturdy to hold the salmon mousse. Eggs are almost done. There we go. Okay. I'm taking these off the heat and I'm just going to run these straight with cold water and it should make for easy peeling. I'm going to peel the eggs now. Okay, so I'm just peeling the eggs and the shell should come off really easily and you shouldn't break off any of the white. Okay, we can finally start putting this all together now. I'll grab the dressing. So, on top of the little bread circles that we have, a little bit of dressing and then a thin slice of cucumber on top. Usually if the cucumber was a little bit larger that would be the same size as the bread but we're going to top it as well with a little bit of pimento and dill. So if you want more of a pink color, you can just add a little bit more red onion in and it will look beautiful. And you can use white bread or rye bread. They both go very nicely. The recipe calls for pimento for the toppings, but I have capsicum, so I'm going to finely chop that up. Okay, now that we have our capsicum there, we also have dill as well. You can use fresh dill, or you can actually freeze your own dill and it keeps it for a lot longer obviously and it still works perfectly just like fresh dill so we've got cucumbers sliding off their little mountains <laughs> i'm just going to add a couple on each one and the capsicum really brings a nice color to the top to these little canopies makes it look alive and now for a little sprig of dill. 
on top. Back to my fingers. There we go. Lovely. Can't wait to eat them, but we've got to move on to the next ones and then we can have a lovely grand taste test at the end. Okay, now that these eggs are cooked, we can cut them in half and then scoop out the yolk. Now, you could hard boil these until their the absolute life is <laughs> cooked out of them, but these are a little bit, still a little bit soft. They'll still be lovely. Now we're gonna scoop out these yolks without damaging the white. Pop them out. Now don't mind these little broken eggs. We'll fix those up once we do all of this. We're gonna be putting in some mayonnaise, English mustard, and some salt and pepper, and putting a little bit of paprika on top. Now you can also use dry mustard instead, if that's what you have on hand, but otherwise some prepared hot English mustard. Now you're going to put about a tablespoon and a half, even though this is a fork because I need to mash this up. So yeah, about a tablespoon and a half of mayonnaise and you're just going to mash this together until it's smooth. As well as sprinkling paprika on top, we're also going to put a quarter of a teaspoon in the mixture too. And some lovely hot English mustard. So we're gonna put in about three quarters of a teaspoon of the prepared mustard. I feel like it's burning my eyes. And a bit of salt and pepper as well. And mix that all together. So now that this mixture is all done, we can either dollop that into the egg whites or you can use a piping bag. Since I don't have a lot of mixture, I'm just gonna dollop these straight in, but you can use a pretty little design that can pipe them out in a really pretty floral shape. But we're dolloping today. And I forgot the vinegar, so about half a teaspoon of vinegar as well. Now we can mix that up and then we can dollop. Alright, they're good, yum. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. So now, if you can, just try and clean up the outside of that white because you don't want any leftover from the yolk in there. And make a clean little dollop of egg on top. So again, just cleaning the outside so that it looks lovely and presentable putting a good dollop of the egg yolk mixture in. Okay. And you can, I mean, you can load these up as much as you want. It really just depends on how fat you want your little eggs to be. Now you can top these with some sliced olives. I think traditionally a nice green olive with a pimento in the middle is a nice topping but you can also add some parsley. So I'm gonna get some fresh parsley out of the garden so that we can put on these little eggs. All right, this is the final canapé. This is the salmon mousse. Now I'm going for more of a creamy salmon dip that's gonna be on the cucumbers. If you want to make it a mousse, you can, and that calls for whipping cream that you have to whip before adding it into your salmon mixture. 
but I'm going for easy today and it's just nice and simple cream cheese, a little bit of mayonnaise, the salmon, some lemon, salt and pepper, and that's it. Oh yes, and some dill too. All right, and I'm just gonna put that all in. I am putting one piece of salmon and I'm just going to pull off, whoop, I'm just gonna pull off the skin and pop that in. And now putting in the dill and cream cheese. and the mayonnaise as well. Now a neat little tip to get as much juice out of your lemon as possible is to give it a little bit of a roll before you cut it. And I'm just gonna use about a squeeze of lemon in this Squeeze it in your hand and then you catch the seeds. Haha! <laughs> uh -huh. So this recipe calls for lemon and pepper seasoning. So if you have a dry mixture that is lemon and pepper, that makes it a lot easier. But I'm just going for something a little bit fresher and extra tasty. And a little bit of salt as well. All right, and we'll just blend this up until it's completely smooth. And like before, there's only a small amount of mixture, so it's really hard to mix it. So you might have to help and help the machine out and get a spoon in there and give it a bit of a mix and then blend it again as much as needed. Let's give this a go again. Shake it down to the bottom. All right, I'm calling that a day. It's not completely mixed like a spread, but it's gonna work. I just don't have quite enough mixture. Actually, actually, that, <laughs> it worked. It worked. It's pretty much all blended through. I call that a win. <laughs> now the trick is with these cucumber slices that we made earlier. If you have a melon baller, you can scoop the middle bit of this out so that the mousse doesn't just slip right off the cucumber slices. So since I don't have a melon baller, I'm just going to really carefully just cut out some of that cucumber in a little hole in the middle but make sure that you don't go through the other side because otherwise you're going to pick up your little canapes and your mousse is going to fall straight on the floor. <laughs> so let's just gently take out that middle bit without cutting through to the very bottom, like that. And you're going to just repeat that to all of them. All right, now that all of our cucumbers have the little dips in the middle, we can go and dollop in some of this salmon. And if you do have that piping bag and you have enough mixture, you can pipe that into here and that would look really pretty, but we're, we're being lazy today. And you can put as much or as little as you want on these cucumbers. Now obviously if you were wanting to present these for a dinner party as the hostess, you would want to make these look as lovely as possible. But since these are just they don't have to look perfect. And any leftover mixture that you have, you can easily put this on a sandwich for the next day. It'll last in the fridge for a few days and it's an excellent spread for really anything. Mm -hmm. 
And for a little extra something, you can add some little bits of dill on top. Delicious. <laughs> that was deliciously creamy, had the right amount of vinegar and a good kick of mustard. Really, really good. Now let's move on to the little canapes with cucumber and bread. These are really light. These are the perfect little canapes. They're so small and bite-sized and they're just the perfect little food to have at any sort of event. So delicious. <laughs> really good. Is it good? Did I do a good job? I love it. <laughs> it's super delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. All of these canapes were absolutely delicious. And like I've already mentioned, all the recipes will be in the description box below. Let me know if you make these and see you next week. Bye. Next week on Dining Through the Decades, we make spaghetti and meatballs from the 1953 edition of the Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. Oh, stop it! Stop it! Did you just undo that? <laughs>